Uh, I'm excited to introduce our, uh, our ceremony speaker, uh, someone who has just been awarded the, uh, an, honorable, uh, an honor doctorate from uh, Carnegie Mellon University uh, for her huge accomplishments towards the field of computer science. Shafi Goldwater is an undergraduate alumna of Carnegie Mellon. She received her bachelor's degree in 1979 in mathematics. Why mathematics? Why not computer science? Because we, didn't, we actually didn't have a computer science department back, there, back then, which is hard to imagine. But she was one of the first generation of major computer scientists produced by this school. Even then, she was way ahead. She was also among the very few women studying computer science in those days. She went on to master's and PhD degrees from Berkeley, where her advisor was Turing Award winner Manuel Blum, who is now, of course, one of our esteemed uh, members of faculty here at Carnegie Mellon University. She spent her career at MIT and the Wiseman Institute and is best known for her work on cryptography, winning many awards for really quite astonishing situations where using mathematics underlying the number theory that we need, she, on at least three occasions in her career, completely turned on their heads our previous assumptions of what you could actually do with cryptography. Among her many uh, awards for this is the Turing Award, the highest possible award in the, in the world of computer science in 2012, along with Silvio Micali, also a student of Manuel's. She recently took on the directorship of the Simons Institute for the Theory of Computing in Berkeley, where we're all expecting and we know with full confidence she will continue to lead in the field of computer science uh, and create amazing new technology for us. So, Please join me in welcoming Shafi to say a few words. Thank you for that in incredible introduction. Thank you. So dear students, parents, colleagues, um, really standing here before you uh, is, is very special for me because it does complete a circle in my life. I uh, started my academic life here at Carnegie Mellon in 1976. I was a math major, uh, and then later I was focused on computer science. I came from Israel, and uh, it was somewhat of a whim to join my brother, who's here in the audience. Hi, Nathan. <laughs> uh, he was a math undergraduate here as well, and then he went to business school. And there weren't too many foreign students at the time at uh, Carnegie Mellon. I think I've heard that now it's about 15% as undergraduates. And I still remember that somebody asked me in Skibo, which was the cafeteria then, when I said that I came from Israel, is whether my family has a camel. <laughs> they, they didn't, and in fact, I, don't, I didn't know anyone who did. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you know, things like, you know, in the break between the semesters, they would close down the graduate dorm because nobody, everybody went home, but I went to spend uh, the Christmas break with my brother who was in the graduate dorm in Madge, and, um, you know, I'm sort of <laughs> following up on Tapper's speech. Uh, um, it really was an effort, right? I mean, Simeo was generous in giving loans, but, you know, I worked in Roy Rogers downtown. Does anybody know what Roy Rogers is? The parents, probably. And um, I had a very thick Israeli accent, which I still have a little bit today, and I didn't know how to say um, howdy partner and big holster coming up, so they fired me. <laughs> they said I said it incorrectly or something. And I do remember that the other workers, they were very anxious for me, and they said, what is going to happen? You're not going to be able to go up to McDonald's, and it's okay. Um, Anyway, so uh, at that time, as, as was just mentioned, you know, there was no computer science major, which is kind of amazing seeing all of you. If you wanted to um, study computer science, which I didn't, because I didn't know anything about it, you know, I was a math major and I did this math study sequence. Uh, but if you, and then I heard about that there was this very good computer science department uh, and um, there was a computer science track. So that's what I did. I sort of went from the math study sequence to study, take computer science courses. And uh, without realizing, and essentially almost by chance, because I really just followed my brother here, I found uh, my life's calling really here in Carnegie Mellon. I was exposed to the most amazing courses, teachers, ideas at Carnegie Mellon at the time. The field was truly beginning. You know, you never know that you're in the beginning, but I was at the beginning. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I remember classes with legendaries like Raj Reddy and Nico Haberman and Mary Shaw and John Bentley. 
And uh, most of all, I started doing research here. So as an undergraduate, I worked on this project called CM Star. You probably don't know what it is. It was 16 small computers um, <laughs> attached together with a shared memory. And the question was, how do you program such a thing? And what do you do with it even? Is, what is it good for? And that is, I didn't realize that this was really a re revolutionary question. Even today, we don't necessarily you know all the answers to that, as a uh, guy here knows. But this was thrown as me as an undergraduate and to come up with some application on the CM Star and I was working with a graduate student. And I uh, thought, as probably a lot of you think when you start doing research, is that I just didn't know the answers, but somebody else knew the answers. But it's just not true, nobody knew the answers. Um, and I didn't realize how hard it was and how innovative it was. And this kind of brings me back to Carnegie Mellon as a whole. It's always been an incredibly innovative place a pioneer in computer science, sort of from beginning to today. Um, and, you know, I went to, um, you know, I went to uh, California because Raj Reddy, who really paid attention to me as an undergraduate, gave me a, a recommendation and got me this job at RAND in Santa Monica. And uh, then I drove up the coast and fell in love with Berkeley. But my point being is that I was in Carnegie, I was at Berkeley, then I was at MIT, but I kept paying attention to what was happening at CMU. And there were all these things, you know, this initiative that every student would have a, a personal computer, it started here. You know, then we adopted it at MIT with the Athena project. You know, No Hands Across America, this autonomous vehicle, the robotics project. Um, it just kept striking me that how original and innovative this place has always been. I guess you have now this artificial intelligence undergraduate major is also a first. The fact that there are international campuses all around the world of Carnegie Mellon, I think this is sort of, was pioneered here, this idea. So I don't know if you know that, but this is an incredibly innovative place. And you should pay attention in the future as you go along to see what happens here. And um, uh, what else did I want to say that I remember here especially? So there's the innovation, there are these wonderful teachers, the fact that the people of Pittsburgh, which most of the undergraduates were Pittsburgh, from Pittsburgh then, had a fantastic sense of humor. I never knew people could be so funny. Um, but they were. Uh, another thing is that uh, this is like the seven. 76 to 79, uh, there were very strong women mentors around here. There was Anita Jones, there was Mary Shaw, there were very powerful presence in the department, you know. I, uh, there were people that I looked up to. And I know this is still part of, public, part of the, you know, conversation, but I didn't actually realize it at the time because these women were so kind of upfront there and present. So this was all about personal, you know, about me, um, about how honored I am. Uh, so just saying a few more general things, um, as you know, uh, this is a young, it's no longer exactly a young field, it's not such an old field. When I started cryptography, there was this paper by Diffie and Hellman that said we are on the brink of a revolution. I think it's completely true again now, that we are on the brink of a revolution. That somehow it's been recognized that these automated, data-driven algorithms can change the world in so many disciplines. And of course, there's a lot of warnings, because when you change the world, you might make sure you don't do it too quickly without realizing what you're doing, but it's an incredible period. It's like, wow, if I had to choose what I was going to major in today, I would do the same. <laughs> Except this time it actually makes sense. Uh, and then it was sort of by chance. Um, and another thing, you know, because I'm a theorist, I would say that uh, don't forget the importance of basic research and the importance of recognizing a good idea when it comes up, even though it's not clear that it was made to solve a particular application tomorrow. But I can honestly tell you that if I look at all the big revolutions we have in computer science, it all started with some ideas in some paper, which is about the fundamentals. And it may take a 10 years, it may take 20 years, sometimes it may take 30 years, and then you see it come to fruition and maybe and change the world from uh, impact on industry, impact on money, impact on governments. Um, Emmanuel was just telling me that maybe world peace, you know, uh, there is a lot that can be done there's a lot of wisdom from the past, and you have got uh, the wisdom to generate ideas for the future. So I want to congratulate you, and um, I'm going to keep watching what happens. Thank you.